From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empey Presents. There is so much going on in the world and we're so grateful that we can come into your home or wherever you watch the program and enlighten you with some of the things we don't hear maybe uh, locally in our newspapers or television. This first one really hit me. Oh, merger of ISIS and Al Qaeda could cripple the civilized world. Can you believe it? If they come together, whoa. And then terror hits Canadian capital, and we will discuss what happened to our neighbor to the north. And World Health Organization says Ebola outbreak could last forever. That's a headline, could last forever. Many Christians today believe that we are approaching Armageddon, whoa, that word means something. And that the four horsemen, you know, there are four horsemen that Jesus gave in the book of Revelation, four of them, that would point toward Armageddon, all right? Now, I'm going to ask Jack, if he would please, uh, to give us uh, a, a sort of a, a look at what Armageddon really means. What does it really mean, Jack? Everybody wants to know. It's the greatest time of war in the history of the world. We talk about World War I, World War II, where 50 million died. Well, World War III, as Pope Francis calls it, is what the Bible calls Armageddon, Revelation 16, 16. And we're going to see one half of the population of the world die during that time. And we have the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And we have the white horse, red horse, black horse, and pale horse, a greenish, sickly-looking animal. We're going to deal with all of it today, but listen to this. Here is what the Bible says about it. In 2 Timothy 3, 1, listen to also that the last day, perilous, dangerous time shall come. In Luke 21, verse 25, Jesus said, nations will be in distress with perplexity and mass confusion. Jeremiah 30, verse 7, the last for that day is great, so that none is like it. Daniel 12, 1, there shall be a time of trouble such as never was. And Jesus said in Matthew 24, 21, for then shall be great tribulation such as never was since the beginning of the world to this time, no nor ever shall be again. And there are going to be three invasions that we're going to see today. And we've got the Muslim people saying they're planning for it. The Israeli people saying, so are we. And many nations of the world are getting ready for this hour of history. And today, I'm going to tell you, the only good news is this. I believe born-again Christians are going to be evacuated, lifted out of here before it begins. Why? Revelation 16, 16 is during the seven-year period. But we leave just before that. When? Revelation 3, verse 10. I will keep you from not through, from the Greek word ek, the hour of testing which comes upon the whole world to test them that dwell upon the face of the earth. Oh, Jesus, come quickly. Amen, Jesus, come quickly, absolutely. Now, we're going to deal with those four horsemen. I'm talking to a girl just this morning, and she says, four horsemen? I never heard of that before. Well, we're going to go one at a time and let Jack explain why the Bible so explicitly gave us four horsemen that points to the coming of the Lord. I like the first one, especially the white horse. This horseman is riding on a white horse. I like that, don't you? What does that represent, Jack? Okay, in Revelation 19:11, Jesus, the Prince of Peace, Isaiah 9, 6, sits on a white horse and he comes to put an end to the battle of Armageddon and bring peace upon the earth. So this individual in Revelation 6, verses 1 and 2, wants to imitate 
the Christ who comes. And so he comes to power on a peace platform and he has a bow without arrows. And he comes to challenge the world. And the Bible teaches in Revelation 13, verse 1, this is the world dictator we call the Antichrist. And he has control over all kindreds, tongues, people, and nations, Revelation chapter 13, verse 7. And all the world worships him, thinking he's that Christ, verse 8. But there is a false prophet who reigns with him in Revelation 11 to 15. And he has the two horns of a lamb identifying him with the Christian faith. For John the Baptist, when he saw Jesus, said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. So this is a Christian personality reigning with this world dictator. And he's promoting the one world religion, the one world church. And soon I'll be telling you where this is all headed because we are facing that hour very, very soon. Well, now this one gets the power on this peace platform. How do you know that? Daniel 11, 21, he comes in peaceably. Verse 24, he enters in peaceably. And he makes a seven-year contract. Daniel 9, 27. And that's called Shabuah in Hebrew or Heptad in Greek and means seven years. But after 42 months, it's broken. Now this thing that's going on with ISIS isn't going to last. Why? Because this leader must come and make this peace and things have to stop at that point. And after 42 months, all hell breaks loose. And I'm telling you, folks, we are right at that moment. And all hell is going to be here very, very soon. What you say, Jesus, there never has anything been like it in the past, nor will there ever be anything like it again in the coming hours. But I will return to put a stop to it. Revelation chapter 11, verse 18, and set up my glorious kingdom on earth over Jerusalem. Luke 1, verses 32 and 33. And that's the story of the white horse. He's coming. Oh, yes, I love it, Jay. Now, down through the years, uh, there have been many organizations who have tried to bring peace to the world. Is that not right, Jack? What are some of the... One World Order, yes. All right, a One World Order. Well, it started 2,000 years ago with the Illuminati in Egypt. And the years grew, and finally they started coming to this part of the world. It wasn't long until we had, for the second group, the Council of Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, and then the Bilderbergs, the Club of Rome, the European Union, and the New Age Movement, all working for this one world religion. And Rexella, they said, and this was Rabbi Hagian, many centuries ago, when we have a 10 division world empire, our Messiah will come. That's Whoa. the announcement that he will be here. And Saint Jerome, who wrote the Latin version said, when the ten division world empire comes, our Jesus will be here. And we believe that Christ could come at any time because everything is now in place for this great war. It could never happen until our generation is we're going to see. It. A ten division world empire. Did you know we got it already? I want to put it on the screen. They've divided the world up into 10 division world empire. America, Canada, Mexico, South America, Australia, New Zealand, Western Europe, Eastern Europe, Japan, number seven, South Asia, Central Asia, number eight, number nine, North Africa and Middle East, and then 10, the remainder of Africa. We've already got it. I can't believe yes. that, Jack. And it was the Club of Rome, Rexella that put this together and it's on the drawing boards and waiting to take shape. Plus, the Bilderbergs a few years ago meeting in Virginia created a system to put microchips on every human being on earth and we're gone when that happens. Now, a false prophet arises with this Antichrist and that is his job to do. In chapter 13, Verse 16, he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or forehead that no man, no man, world control, might buy or sell save he that had the mark of the name of the beast or the number of his name. 
Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it's the number of a man, and his number is 600, three score, and six. A score is 20, so three score is 60. Six, 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 that infamous number. And by the way, Big Brother has arrived, and both Japan and America now have calculators that do billions of calculations per second. It's near. All right. Well, there's that white horse trying to set up a, a peaceful government that's worldwide. And we have a 10 division world empire. It fails. All right, let's look at the second horseman. The second one comes on a red horse. I'm going to ask Jack again. What does the red horse mean? In Revelation chapter 6, verses 3 and 4, we have this rider on the red horse who takes peace from the earth. As I said a moment ago, the peace contract lasts for 42 months, and then all hell breaks loose on the earth. And who is the one that's behind it? Ezekiel 38, verses 1 and 2. Gog, Magog, Meshach, Tubal, all cities in Rosh, or Russia in Greek, or Russia in English today. And guess what? This writer says in Ezekiel 38, 11, I am going to take peace from the earth. But he is the one associated with Meshach, Moscow, a city in Rosh, Russia. Oh, Jack, so interesting. Called the Red Horse. Now, you know, we don't have to wonder if this horseman is ready to ride because of the political battles and religious jihad. Take a look, please, at some of these headlines. Islamists gather to fight Mohammed's promised Armageddon. Israel told prepare for Armageddon and forget U.S. help. Pope Francis warms up. What? World War III, and ISIS threatens Vatican, urges Muslims to kill every crusader. They say we're going to conquer Rome, break the crosses, and enslave the women. Italian party leader ISIL threatening entire world. Oh, dear. Here's a report. Merger of ISIS and al-Qaeda could cripple civilized world. Well, here's that red horse. How far will he go? Putin's push to recharge Russia. Putin to put Russian bases in Latin America and how U.S.-Russia enmity aids Beijing. And then from contempt to camaraderie, they're talking about Russia and China and U.S. Admiral China to have nuclear missiles on subs very, very soon. Do you see, friends, how that red horse could ride? Oh, my, Jack, we're there. Well, we've been talking here the last few weeks about Armageddon and Russia. And there's no doubt this is Russia, as I've shown you in the past, because Magog was the name used by the Greeks for the Scythians who populated Russia. Meshek was the original name for Masach, Muscatine, Moscow, and all cities in Russia today. Now, Russia and her Muslim allies found in Daniel 11:40, Isaiah 17, 1, Ezekiel 38, 5 to 7, and Psalm 83, verses 5 to 7, are defeated in Ezekiel 39, verses 1, 2, 12, and 13. Seven months it takes to bury the dead, and every available human being is at the job. And then China comes down, the great hordes from the east, Revelation 16, 12. The Bible is so clear, and that's why these guys are really friends now, and they're going to come together. They have signed the Shanghai Agreement Treaty, where Russia and China will fight together. Now, this will be the bloodiest battle in history. Revelation 14, verse 20 says that the blood flowed to the horses' bridles by the space of 1,600 furlongs. A river of blood 200 miles long, that's the length of the nation of Israel. And Battle is described in Revelation 9, 14 to 18. Loose the four demons in the great river Euphrates to slay a third part of mankind. And the number of the army was 200,000, 200 million. And by these three was the third part of men killed by the fire, smoke, brimstone, atomic warfare. Oh, folks, God help us as to what's coming. Thank God the rapture will be here and we'll hear the cry, come up hither. Revelation 4, when it will sweep through the heavenlies in the twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15, 52. That's our only hope at this point. And now, friends, I just want to talk a little bit about the offer 
that we have. And it's entitled, whoa, Awake America 2020. And we need to wake up, don't we, friends? We need to be ready for the coming of the Lord. I'm trusting that you'll write for the video. Awake America. There's so much that we're going to be dealing with. We're going to be dealing with the stress that people are going through, what it results in. We're going to be dealing with a war in the Middle East that's coming very, very soon. Very important. So please write. I'll be happy to send you Awake America 2020. Now here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck. Thank you, Rexella. Oh, my friend, to order. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JBI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717 Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now, once again, here's Rexella. Thank you so very much, Chuck, and I want to encourage you right and get that. Awake America 2020. Now, Jack, you've been talking about war, but the second part of that verse talks about terrorism. Take a look, please, uh, friends, at what happened to our neighbor in the north. Canada gunfire erupts at Parliament. And terror hits Canadian capital. That's right. Going on. Wall Street Journal. Oh, my, oh, my. Gunman's journey to terror. And then Muslim convert. Oh, dear. A suspect in Ottawa attack. Canadian soldiers run down impossible Quebec terror attack. There's a second city in Canada. Three Toronto teenagers attempt to join ISIS. And then the homegrown jihadist threat grows. Well, you know, they're reaching out online to recruit young people. Terror connection not ruled out in hatchet attack, the police say. Scotland Yard, minimum of five Britons join ISIS. What? Every week. And Islamic State crisis, 3,000 European jihadists join the fight. Oh, Jack, I have to ask him this. Where will all this lead? This is what Jesus predicted in Luke 21, verse 9. He says, when you hear of wars and commotions, wars and revolutionaries, wars and terrorism, then know that my coming is near. Ladies and gentlemen, it has arrived. We have never seen such terrorism in the world. And it's the prediction of Jesus in Matthew chapter 24, verse 37. He says, as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. How was it in Noah's day? The whole world was filled with violence. But that's the greatest sign that the rapture is about to take place. For Jesus said, when it's happening, then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And that, of course, is Luke that same chapter 21, verse 27. And he says, the generation that lives to see this shall not pass. We are that generation. And that is the same chapter, verse 32. Mm, Jack, I'm going to go on to the third horseman, the black horse, global financial destruction. Here you see it, stock swoon in frenzy day. Clamor for stocks resumes, but fears lurk in market. Risk of deflation feeds global fears. And Dow erases gains for a year as global fears rattle the market. And here's one more. Venezuela's currency hits new low. That is worldwide, friends. That's not just here in the United States. Rex, hello, that's Revelation chapter 6, verses 5 and 6. And the rider on the black horse has a pair of balances because of the economic problems and the hunger that's going on. And it says, uh, he's crying out a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. And a measure was a day's wages, and all they could get was 16 ounces of bread or whatever they were buying. Now, Jesus talked about that in the book of Revelation, chapter 18, verse 10, for in no one hours or judgment come. Verse 17, for when in one hour all her riches has come to nothing. And verse 19, for in one hour she made desolate. It's here. 
Oh, Jack, it is here, and now I want to go to the fourth horse, which is the pale horse that pictures disease. Take a look at this. World Health Organization, West Africa, Ebola. Deaths near 4,500. Ebola infection rate may rise to 10,000 new cases per week, and then Ebola outbreak could last forever. Mosquito virus that walloped Caribbean spreads in U.S. West Nile virus threat growing. Deadly bird flu mutation sparks contagion concerns. And then, of course, the killer Spanish flu. Could it happen again? Superbugs could cast the world back into the dark ages, David Cameron says. I'm going to go right to Jack Van Impey to explain this for us. Oh, what a book, Revelation chapter 6, verses 7 and 8. He said, I saw a pale horse, and his name was called Death, and hell followed with him, and power was given unto him over one-fourth of the population of the earth to kill with sword, hunger, death, and and the beasts of the field were the generation. All four things are here now. Jesus is about to come. Oh, yes, Jack, Jesus is about to come. How wonderful. Remember right up front of the program, I said the four horsemen pointed to the return of the Lord. Oh, how good it is to know the Lord's coming back. Thy will be done on earth. Are you ready? Is Jesus in your heart? Is Jesus your Savior? Will you please pray this prayer with Jack? opening your heart to the Lord to be your Savior, Jack. Every sign is here. Don't put it off, folks. Lord Jesus, Savior of the world, the one who shed that blood to cleanse me from every sin I've ever committed, and I've committed them, Lord, and I'm sorry, and I'm trusting in you now. Jesus, be my Savior. Come into my heart. Wash me today so I can be with you because every sign says you're coming soon and I want to be there. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Amen. How good it is to know that when you open your heart to the Lord, you are his child. You've been forgiven of everything. Write to me. There's my address. If you prayed that prayer, I'll send you this wonderful little book at First Steps in a New Direction. We need to be walking that direction with the Lord. If ever we needed to be looking up and talking to the Lord, it's now. I love this closing. You'll never get a busy signal on the prayer line to heaven. Look forward to being at home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.